Hello, here we have a presentation, uh, part of the presentation devoted to discussing some slides coming from General Motors, a talk given by senior engineer there, David Brooks, at a conference in Oak Ridge on the use of AI in engineering. So here we are, let's get going. Um, so here is a sort of interesting dream of the mobility industry. No crashes, no emissions, and no congestion. And here is the actual formal links. I think David Brooks was sending me his slides so I could use them. And um, that's the, I think it's a good goal for both GM and the whole industry. And uh, here is some of the challenges to these so-called mega cities. Populations exceeding 10 million. And we have 28 of them now, including Wuhan lockdown and going up to 41 by 2030, or around 41, that's the estimate. And uh, we have to cope with the huge densities of people and corresponding traffic caused by this. And uh, David's comment here was that this is not the solution. We do not need more roads. This is a really amazing road system. Remarkable, I'm not certain where it is. Pretty impressive. Um, okay, now here's an interesting comment from customers of electric vehicles, presumably Tesla customers. And notice the dominant comment, fun to drive. And I asked having, got my, my wife and I both have Teslas, and we think they're really fun to drive. It's the best present we got ourselves ever, uh, where these Tesla cars. And uh, they're comfortable, they're quiet, and they have wonderful acceleration. And um, you know, we have all these side things like that, green and things like that. And um, but that's fuel efficiency. But these are low down compared to these um, some of these rather mundane things, which people I think who we're very negative about Tesla. Tesla's recently done well in the stock market, and as because it succeeded, where everybody thought they would fail, and I think it's actually succeeded largely because of this. Their cars are just nice, and people who have their cars like them, and they have all sorts of positive things, like they're electric and have interesting self-driving features. But this is the main reason. They have weaknesses, like the maintenance is not so easy to get. Uh, people have to, because the nearest major uh, Tesla installations in Indianapolis, which is um, well over an hour away from here. All right, but this is important. Um, you have to, when you want to succeed, you need to combine technology with a little attention to the pleasure of the customer. Now that says, like, if an iPhone's uh, design is very important. That's why I say at uh, Indiana University, the ACI program is very successful, because you have to design your iPhones as well as writing the software. So the one thing you're trying to do is to do V2X, which is vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure. You can see what the infrastructure is. It's the roads itself with speeds and work zones and traffic signals. And of course, very importantly, vehicle to other things Dominantly pedestrians, which need to be avoided, and cyclists are particularly tricky. And then, um, of course, we have to know that these pedestrians don't always, not always so easy to see. As I, when I drive in the morning, I often then on a rather dark road locally, um, pedestrians tend to walk in non-optimal fashion, We're using dark clothes on the wrong side of the road, so it's not so easy. Okay. And here is the uh, what their aim is, that they're going to give basic warnings, active safety warnings, that's sort of now. Um, and then they're going to do active safety control. Here's the self-driving thing. So it's coming in relatively early. It's not Gartner's miserable 2030, 2022. We're going to get key self-driving features into General Motors cars. And here says what are these autonomous vehicles look like. Uh, we have a lot of sensors. Here we have the car, and it's sort of looking at things in all sorts of different directions, backwards, forwards, um, probably upwards if necessary. Maybe a drone is about to land on top of it. But most of the important ones are forwards, 
followed by back, side and backwards. And we have to be able to understand the scene. scene there's a whole section on scene understanding, because that's fundamental to many fields. And um, that's in the lectures, there's a section called scene understanding. Data fusion means taking data from different sources and using it to clarify the overall situation. <coughs> and then <coughs> this is interacts with the data, which is from other vehicles, V to V, the cameras, the radars, and the lidars. Then you make plans and you manage the whole system and you control the vehicle. And here you make your vehicle travel in the right direction on the long term, on the right path. Okay. And this is the bridge to zero crashes. So we have, these are what you have to do. Super Cruise is a GM feature, uh, currently available on the more expensive GM machines, uh, cars. And um, this is the active safety drive assistance technology. And that's what you have here. This is, remember, this is what we had before. Informed, that's passive safety, assist and avoid, active safety, and full control, which is drive up here. And so here's automation. Here's your self driving car. And uh, you have recognized the blind zone, assist lane changes, uh, do the lane change on demand, uh, keep in the same lane. That's sort of a cruise type capability. Uh, adaptively uh, adjust the speed to keep a certain distance behind the next car and so on that. Alert collisions, <coughs> but to actually do something, do the brake, that's assist and avoid. And here we have to actually avoid very complicated things like a bunch of pedestrians going doing stupid things. And here we have um, automatic braking, uh, and this is when you're doing backups, going backwards, reverse, and um, you have to you know, be worried about the traffic and things like that. Parking assistance, semi-automatic, automatic. <coughs> Tesla offered essentially automatic parking at the moment. Then we have V to V, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, and we want to avoid crashes at intersections for obvious reasons. Here we are. All right, here is some comments from Brooks on what it takes to build uh, autonomous vehicles. And um, obviously sensors are critical. We even have to debate which sensors we want. We discussed that already. The LIDARs and cameras and things like that. As there are more and more self-driving cars get built, the sensor costs will come down, the software costs will come down, the compute costs will come down. Standard. Um, thing that happens with uh, technologies as they evolve. Um, well, there are going to be more and more people. All the people now now making um, spark plugs will have to switch to making lidar plugs or whatever it is. Uh, we need power efficiency in our computing. There's a graph later on pointing out that adding all these nifty features to cars takes power, and that reduces your 300 mile range of your electric vehicle to 169, not so good. Well, we have to do everything with security. I pointed out an article on security at the beginning of these lectures. We have to have wonderful maps. Well, we have, that's needed, but it's not a critical thing. And we have to do um, <coughs> things in 3D with or without LiDAR. And we need to understand scene understanding as the basic uh, sort of intellectual or computer vi vision topic to, to, to implement, and I pointed out snow and heavy rain and and uh, doing things which are polite to, and recognized as being polite is pretty important. And uh, we have to understand what people are doing. For you, it may be obvious what the pedestrian is doing, but for the car, they may not recognize some social cues. And we need to be able to manage all this data, all the training data, or the operational data. All right, here we have some more things we have to do. Uh, we already discussed the generating with simulations sort of data scenarios, which would land in our real life data set. 
edge track cases and random nonsense with bonkers pedestrians doing things which uh, uh, may confuse a well-trained uh, robot. And then of course, we already come back to bad weather, uh, willful nonsense situations, um, which are just unexpected and unpredictable. We have to, because always you need labeled data, your image has to be associated with the result. Uh, we need to be able to generate that labeling automatically. And we have to have quality assurance. And we have to be able to do this at very large scales. That's a large scale computer systems problem. We need that the infrastructure, which is going to be the back end cloud for training. And we need to train the models faster and cheaper. And we need to validate them because things will change with time. And we need to explain when, when we do something bad, and we have to explain why we did something bad. And uh, <clears throat> we need to know uh, why, how, why things take a long time and things like that. And we have to be able to generate very good simulations. And um, billions of miles and hours and days. Concurrence, everything has to be done in parallel. And because we want to run faster than real time to be able to cope with real time. And we, everything has to be done against, validated against unforeseen scenarios. And uh, that, that's, we mentioned this already, injecting objects into existing images. And fuzzing to create new corner cases. Those we mentioned earlier. All right, here we have um, some definitions of, of, of uh, abbreviations you see over here. Uh, VHM is vehicle health monitoring, and HMI is the human machine interface. And this, these are the parts of the car, um, including cybersecurity materials, mobility, data analytics, manufacturing, active safety, automated driving, and powertrain. That was the, ex I think, the expertise of David Brooks. And uh, everything has to be, um, uh, we run as a fleet. We have to manage that fleet, and we need to know about physics and chemistry. And we also need to get some personalization to it. People, if they're going to spend a lot of money, want to have it really what they want. Here's this comment about computing the power takes away um, mileage. And here is additional accelerators. Start off with a mileage of 240, that's the base Tesla. And then we end up with 168. Not so good. Um, you already see that in um, my Tesla. In the winter, because of the need for power to do heating, his mileage actually is significantly de degraded. Um, so that's inevitable. But if you have a better computer which uses less power, then you're not going to use so much power controlling the the car. And here is the uh, uh, last of these slides about GM having 20 new vehicles by 2023. So this is what I said, electric has suddenly become the norm. GM is having 20 new vehicles by 2023. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So that's it, thank you.